Okay, right, my next, well, the paper that I'm going to do next, it's the Edexcel Foundation Paper 1 from Mathematics, that is, Mathematics Foundation Paper 1 from May 2017. Okay, um, it's a non-calculated paper. Uh, so I'll do the first half of the paper now and then do the second half after a break. So question one, work out the value of 2 to the power of 4. Okay, so wait, this is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 2, 4 twos all multiplied together. 2 times 2 is 4 for the first 2. And then the next 2 is times 4 again. So the final answer is 16. Question 2. It says, write 7 point 6. I'm going to put the pen down a bit here because it's too big. Write 7.26451, correct to three decimal places. So look, it's 7.2. Actually, look, it's that big pen. Well, it must. 7.26451. So three decimal places. So there's the decimal point, and we count three on one, two, three. It takes us to the four. We imagine chopping off after the four, but we just have a little look at the number next to the four. If it's five or above, it means the number to the left of the dotted line I've just drawn goes up by one. If it's not to four, it would stay. It would. It wouldn't go up. Okay. Five means that this one goes up by one. So it's 7.265. 3a, simplify 7 times e times f times 8. What we can do is put the numbers together. 7 eighths, 56. And then the letters, e times f is e, f. So put it all together, the answer is 56. E, F. Okay, the next one. Uh, this part B, this is actually saying X divided by 5 equals 2 and a half. So we've got some number, we divide it by 5 and we get 2 and a half. Okay, so a good thing to do here is to multiply each side by 5. Okay, so if we do x over 5 times 5, that's going to give us just the x you see. So basically, x is going to be, just put that up, x is 2 and a half times 5. Okay, now 2 times 5 is 10, and a half, to, a half times 5, you can think of that as a half of 5, which is 2 and a half. So x is actually going to be 10 plus 2 and a half. Okay, 5 times 2 is 10. 5 times a half is 2 and a half. So the total is going to be 12 and a half. Okay, the next one, write 4 fifths as a percentage. Okay, so for this, you may well know that 1 fifth is 20%. If you didn't know this, what, what you would do, you'd say fives into 100 is fives into 10 goes two, and then an extra zero there. So one fifth is 20%. So then we've got four fifths. Four fifths is 20% times four, which is 80%. Okay, so there's your answers for the first page. There, 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 and there. Page two. Work out 60% of 70. Well, the way to do this, we can always work out 10% of 70 is 7. To work out 10%, you divide by 10. And that's the only percentage that you do that with. Uh, so 10% you divide by 10, that is 70 divided by 10, which is 7. Okay, and then we can work out 50% of 70. 
50% is a half. So a half of 70 is 35. So what we can say, 60% is going to be 7 plus 35, which is 42. Sixty percent of seventy. I should really say there. Okay. Question six. Sammy spins a fair four-sided spinner. That means any of these sides, they've all got an equal chance of uh, landing down. Mark an X. The probability that the spinner will land on B. Well, because there's four sides and they're all equal, the chance of landing on B is halfway there. Okay, it's actually called a quarter. I think my X is slightly off there, so I'm just going to move it across a little bit. There. Okay, on the probability scale, mark with an X the property that this bin will land on an F. Well, there isn't an F there, so that's a zero. And that's how to do those two. Right, number seven. Fahima buys two packets of bread cost him 150, one bottle of ketchup cost him 160, three packets of sausages. She pays with a £10 note and she gets 30p change. She works out that the sausages cost £2.30, is she right? Okay, well let's start by working out. So the bread, the total for the bread is two times £1.50, which is three pounds. The ketchup, now she only bought one bottle of ketchup and that's one pound sixty okay so at that point she's spent zero she spent four pound sixty when you add those together okay so she's left with ten pounds minus four pound sixty so if we start with four sixty forty p brings us up to a fiver which is going to have five pound forty left over Okay, that's after buying those two items. She's got four, five pound forty. So once she pays with for the sausages, she gets thirty p change. So we say five pound forty. Take away thirty p is five pound ten. So that's what she spent on the three packets of sausages. Packets of sausages so what should so for a packet of sausage a packet of sausages is five pound ten divided by three threes into five go one remainder two threes into twenty one go seven threes into zero go zero so she fahima is incorrect as the sausages cost £1.70 per packet. Okay. Try per packet there. Okay. Right, moving on. Fractions now. When you multiply with two fractions together, five eighths times three quarters, you multiply the tops and you multiply the bottoms. So it's 15 on the top. 32 on the bottom because 5 threes are 15 and 8 fours are 32. When you subtract, and look, we've got different denominators here. We've got a 3 and a 4. When you subtract, we've got 2 thirds take away 1 quarter. We've got to find equivalent fractions. With this, and that means that they've got the same equivalent fractions for each of the 2 thirds and the 1 quarter that both have the same denominator. And the best denominator, common denominator, is the lowest number that 3 will go into and 4 will go into. So that's 3 times 4, which is 12. Okay, so 2 thirds, if we write that as 12s, the 3 has been multiplied by 4. So we've got to do the 2 times 4 as well. And that's going to be 8. The one quarter is twelfths, the 
4 has been multiplied by 3, so we've got to do 1 by 3 as well, it's 3 twelfths. So we want 8, 2 thirds is 8 twelfths, minus 1 quarter is 3 twelfths, so the answer is 5 twelfths. That one was 15 over 32. Okay, and there's the answers there and there. That one, 42, there's the answer, there's the answer there. Okay, and this one is all, it, this one is all one answer by itself because you've got to show where you get the answer from. Right. Number nine, Sean works for a company, his normal rate of pay is £12 per hour. If he works more than eight hours, he gets overtime for those any hour over the eight. His overtime pay is one and a quarter times his normal rate of pay. On Monday, he works for 10 hours. Work out the total amount of money and on Monday. Okay, so his normal rate of pay is for the first eight hours. So he's done eight hours, and it's going to be eight. It's for that lot, he's going to earn eight times 12, which is 96 pounds. That's come from his normal rate of pay is 12, and because he's worked 10, and his normal rate of pay is for the first eight hours. So he's done an extra two hours over time, and he gets so here it says look he gets one and a quarter times his normal rate of pay per hour okay so these two hours overtime the overtime pay is one and a quarter times the normal pay and his normal pay is 12 so it's one and a quarter times 12 pound um, so he gets 1 times 12 pound which is 12 that's the normal and then a quarter times 12 pound well a quarter of 12 is 3 so that is going to be 15 is going to be 12 plus 3 pounds 15 pounds whoops sorry 15 pounds per hour is the overtime so he's two hours overtime, it's going to be two times 15, which is 30 pounds. So he gets 96 pounds for basic and then 30 pounds for the extra two hours. 96 plus 30, 126 pounds. No pets. Okay, number 10. A farmer has 20 eggs, boxes of eggs, six per eggs in each box. Write as a ratio the number of eggs in two boxes to the total number of eggs. Give your answer in its simplest form. Okay, so he's got 20, 20 boxes, each containing six eggs. 20 times six is 120 in total. The number of eggs in two boxes, so in two boxes, that's six eggs in each box. It's going to have two times 12, uh, two times six, sorry, which is 12. I'm thinking of the answer before I've written it down, but I've worked it out. So the number of eggs in two boxes is 12 to the total number of eggs, 220, which simplifies Divide them both by 12 and it becomes 1 to 10. Um, so 12 divided, you can divide both of these numbers by 12. So it's 1 to 10. Okay, there's a few ways of working that out. I went for the, I started with the total number of eggs in those. But you could always say that two boxes. You could always say two boxes to 20 is going to straight away simplify to 1 over 10, 1 over 10 as well, if you wanted to. Okay, so there's lots of ways to work that out. Okay, number 11. 
A sequence of patterns is made from circular tiles and square tiles. These are the first three patterns. How many square tiles are needed to make pattern number six? So pattern number one has got the, the number of square ones. It's got one square. That one's got four. That one's got nine. So if you can see, pattern number two, two squared is four. Three squared is nine. So in pattern number six, we're going to need six squared, which is 36. Now the circular tiles, I'll just rub out this, uh, I'll do the circles at the top actually. The circle circle tiles, we've got four there, two, four, six, eight there, and um, 12 there when you count them up. Okay, this is the these are going up in the four times tables. That's four times one, four times two, that's four times three. So in pattern 20, it's going to be four times 20, which is 80. Okay, then Derek says when the pattern number is odd, an odd number of square tiles is needed to make the pattern. Is he right? You must give reasons. So if we look at the odd numbers, the square tiles, it was one squared, which is one, three squared, which is nine, five squared is 25, seven squared is 49, etc. So these numbers are odd, but to prove it, you can say any odd number is of the form 2n plus 1. Um, and then 2n plus 1 squared. 2n, 1, 2n, 1, 4n squared, 2n, 2n, and 1. So 2 plus 1, 2n plus 1 squared is 4n squared plus 4n plus 1. Which you, and then the first two terms factorise with a 2, which is actually 2n plus 1, which is odd. So Derek is correct. Now I'm not sure the level of proof that you need for this particular exam. Um, it could be by just like looking at the numbers, but I do suspect you need to show that it's always odd with a proof like this. Okay, so Derek is correct. But, um, yeah. Anyway, let's move on. Number 12. There are seven blues, four greens and six red. And there are pens in a box. One pen is taken at random. Probability of a blue. So let's do the total in the box. Is seven plus four plus six, which is 17. The probability of blue is seven blues, seven blues out of 17 in the box. And you have to write that as a fraction, seven over 17. Okay, next one. Diagram shows a tree and a man. The man is an average height. Average height, I would say that was one meter 80. One meter, 80 centimeters. They're drawn to the same scale. Write down an estimate for the real height of the man. Wait, I'm gonna get the ruler. Let's measure, I'm measuring now. You will be able to see this. Then, then on my screen, the mat, it looks like six, seven millimeters. Whereas the height, the tree, is four. What a funny question. The man is about seven millimetres and the tree is four centimetres. So seven millimetres seven millimetres corresponds to one metre 80 centimetres. Um, 
So, and then that was four centimeters on my screen. So I'm going to call it four centimeters is 40 millimeters. Okay. But if we read on to the question, just read that again. Is that eight or five? I'll just zoom in a little bit. I'm going to zoom in a little bit because I don't know what it would be. It's one. That's a little bit better, actually. When I've enlarged, I don't know what it is on the actual paper. But it makes much more sense if you say one centimetre. I enlarge, enlarge my man to make it one centimetre. The tree sort of enlarged to five centimetres. Okay, so that, yeah. Anyway, so basically this is times five. So we're going to times this by five as well. Which will be um, 80 centimetres times 5 is 400 centimetres is 4 metres. So that's going to be 9 metres. Okay, so the estimate for the real height in metres of the man is 1.8 metres. So the tree, because it's 5 times bigger than the man, uh, 1.8 times 5, 5 eighths of 40. That's a zero, carry the four. Five ones are five, plus four is nine. Okay. So I actually answered the question before I even began. I answered the question in the rough work up there, but then put down the answers there. Right. Number 14. The table, year nine students were asked to choose one language only, and there's their choices. Draw an accurate pie chart. Right, I've got a small problem here because I don't have a protractor with me at all. Um, there isn't one on the screen. So what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to have to estimate it. So mine's not going to be very accurate, um, but yours will be a lot better. So first of all, you need to do the total number of students. And that's going to be 56 plus 40 plus 24, which is 120. Okay. So, 120 students in total. So what you can do here is, in here I'll put a proportion. So this is 56 out of 120. This is 40 out of 120. This is 24 out of 120. Um, or actually, probably a better thing to do is to say if we've got 120 students in total, uh, the number of degrees, because the full circle, number of degrees per student, the full circle is 360. So it's going to be 360 divided by 120, which is three degrees each. So I won't go for proportions, I'll go for degrees in there. And this, this French gets 56 students, so it's 56 times 3, 168 degrees. Spanish is 40 students, so that's going to be 120 degrees. And German, 24 students is 72 degrees. So what I would do, if I had a pencil, sorry, and a, rule, and a protractor, um, and first of all, I would measure 168 degrees, which is gonna be around here somewhere, roughly. But you need to do it with a protractor. And then we've got, the last one's gonna be 120 degrees, which is gonna be more like over there. But you'd have to do it properly, and that's about now, does that look like 72? That actually looks more like 90 to me. So I'm going to just change this 120 just to make it look a bit... There, that's maybe a bit better. But you'd have to do it exactly with a protractor. So that's French. Now that one's, that one was Spanish. That one was German. Okay, so there's another 
Different school? Different school, Lowry School. The pie chart shows, so this is a pie chart of French, German and Spanish from a second school. And somebody says the pie chart sh shows French was chosen by more year nine students at Lowry School than at Halley School. Is she right? You must explain your answer. Now, if you look, it looks like French has got the high, French has got more degrees on this diagram than the previous one because it's definitely more than 180. Okay, but it doesn't mean that there's more students because you don't know how many people are in each year group. It doesn't say that at all anywhere. So the pie chart doesn't show that doesn't show that more students chose what's it? French. Shamina says the pie chart French, yeah, chose French. It just shows that higher proportion. Higher proportion chose French. Oops. Okay. So, because it could be like in the first school, even though it's, um, oh, no, they do say this is 56 students. So there's 120 students there. But if in the second school, if it was really huge and there was, say, a thousand students, Oh, no, if the second school was quite small and if there was only 50 students in the whole school, you couldn't possibly have 56 students chose French. So it would be a proportion of 50. So it might be like, say, I don't know, it's more than half, say about 30 or something. So you can't actually say the actual numbers. You can just say the proportions. Right, move on. Number 15. Here's a triangle. Here's a rectangle. The area of the rectangle is six times the area of the triangle. Work out the width of the rectangle. Right, so the area of the triangle is what we need first of all. And that's a half base times height. Half times eight times nine. Half of eight is four times nine is 36 centimeters squared. And it says the rectangle area is six times the area of the triangle. So the area of the rectangle is 6 times 36, that's 180, 216 centimetres squared. You want to see that one broken down, 30 and 6 times 6, 180, 36, 180 plus 36 is 216. And so, <clears throat> what does it say? Work out the width of the rectangle. So we also have the area of the rectangle is 16 times the width. So 16 times width equals 216. So the width is 216 divided by 16. 16s into 21 go 1, remainder 5. 16s into 56. Mm. So it's 16, 32, 48. So it's 3. 3 16s are 48. And it's remainder uh, 8. So that's with an 8 out of 16, which is actually a half. So it's 13.5 centimetres. Okay, so there's the answer there. Okay, yeah, all the answers are good. So there's the answer there. Number 16, V equals U plus AT. Work out the value of V with those sets of values for U, A and T. V is 1 plus minus 3 times a half. So it's 1 minus 3 over 2. 
which is one and a half. So it's one minus one and a half, which is minus a half. Okay. So it's just substituting in there. Number 17. Five tins of soup, total weight 17.50. Four tins of soup, three packets of soup, total weight 14.90. Work out three tins of soup, two packets of soup. Okay, so I'm going to start. Five tins um, weigh 17.50 grams. So if we do 17.50 divided by five, 5 into 17 go 3, remainder 2. 5 into 25 go 5. 5 into 0 go 0. Okay, so 1 tin weighs 350 grams. Okay, I'm just going to underline there. Just to uh, level that off a little bit. The next bit, 4 tins and 3 packets of soup have total weight 14.90. So basically, um, I've dealt with that one. I've dealt with that bit there. I'm up to this next bit now. Right, so four tins of soup. Four tins weigh um, four times 350 grams. So 350 times four. Four knots are not. Four fives are 20. Four threes are 12 plus that two is 1400. Okay, so this is four tins and three packets of soup have total 1490. So four tins and three packets weigh 1490. Okay, so the four tins are 14, 1,400 grams and three packets weigh 1,490 grams. So that means the three packets by itself, therefore the three packets weigh 90 grams. Because you've got the difference from, the difference from 1,419, 1,400 is 90. So, therefore, one packet weighs 90 divided by 3, which is 30 grams. And I'll underline that one. So, we've got one tin at 350, one packet at 30. I've dealt with that bit now. So, the last thing I want is three tins of soup and two packets. Three tins and two packets right they're going to weigh three times 350 for the tins and two times 30 for the packets so three times 350 you can do it this way if you want 350 350 350 5 10 15 3 6 9 10 and then 2 times 30 it's going to make 60. Add them together. 1,050 plus 60. No, 11, 1, 1. 1,110. 1, 1, 1, 0 grams. Got there in the end. Okay. Number 18. Belina has a garden in the shape of a circle, radius 10. He is going to cover the garden with grass seed to make a lawn. Grass seed is sold in boxes and a box will cover 46 square metres. He wants to cover all the garden, so work out the estimate for the number of boxes he needs. You must show your work in. Right, so it's the area that we need. Area of a circle is pi r squared. So that's going to be pi times 10 squared. So it's pi times 100. And so we'll just leave it like that for now. We know pi is 3.14 at least. Oh, we could put that so we can say it's approximately equals to 314. Because if pi is approximately equals to 
multiplied by 100, it's going to be 314 square metres. Okay, so one box will cover 46. Two boxes, that's one box. Two, it's going to be 92, which is 46 plus 46. Okay. Um, we can double again, four boxes. Four boxes, double again, 184. Okay. Um, I'm going to look at six boxes next, which is going to be the 92 plus the 184. So it's six, 17, 276 boxes. So I'm building up um, another box, seven boxes, boxes spot properly, seven boxes, two, seven, six plus 46, 12, 12, that's 322 boxes. So he's going to have to buy seven boxes because six boxes, it's definitely going to be less than 100 pi. And uh, um, seven boxes is greater than 100 pi. So he's going to make sure he's got enough. It would definitely have enough if he buys seven. If he buys six, he'll have some patchy lawn. Right, is your estimate for part A an underestimate or an overestimate? Give a reason for your answer. Well, I think this is it. The estimate is what is um, right. Yeah, it's an overestimate because you want to make sure we've got enough. Um, seven boxes is an overestimate because um, he needs to make sure. He has enough seed. Six boxes is not enough. Okay. Right, number 19. Right, when you've got something like this, there's two ways you can start with this one. Most people start by multiplying out the brackets. So it's 4x. 4 times x is 4x. 4 times 5 is 20, and 18 is what it is. Okay, then we add 20 to each side, so 4x is 38. And then we divide both sides by 4, so to do that without a calculator, we half it and half again. Okay, so x is 38 over 4, so we can half it, which is 19 over 2 um, and then half it again 19 divided by 2 x is 9.5 okay so when I said 38 divided by 4 half it and half it again 38 half it is 19 half again 9.5 or you can do it this way the, the way that I did it here with the fractions 38 over 4 Half the 38 to 19, half the 4 to 2, and then 19 divided by 2 is 9.5. Right, the next one. Minus 3 is less than t is less than or equals to 2. This means t is between minus 3 and 2. It's not actually allowed to be minus 3, but it is allowed to be 2 because of that, that extra bar there. And the integer means whole number. So t is whole numbers. It can't be minus 3. It can be minus 2. But by whole number, it be positive or negative. Okay, so it be minus 2, minus 1, and 0. <sighs> 1 and 2. There are your answers. Minus 2, minus 1, no, 1, 2. So it's, it's whole numbers. We've got to start at minus 3, but we're not allowed to include minus 3. Start at minus 3, don't include minus 3. Whole numbers because of the integer. So we go minus 2, then keep going up until we get to 2. Minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2. 
Okay, as Molly's paid £1,500 a month, it's going to get a 3% increase in the amount of money he's paid. Work out how much money it gets paid after the increase. So, 3% increase is... 3% increase means it's £3 for every 100 Okay, so 1,500 is 15 times 100 pounds. So the increase is going to be 15 times 3 pounds, which is 45 pounds increase. Now it says how much will he be paid? Just cross that off. So he's, he's going to get a profit. His increase is going to be 45 pounds. And so his total amount is going to be 1,500 plus 45 pounds increase, 1,545. Next one, scatter graph shows the maximum temperature and the number of hours of sunshine in 14 British towns on one day. Okay, so along here, look, I'm just looking at the graph. Number of hours of sunshine goes between 7 to 17. And then the maximum temperature goes from, well, the, the scale goes from 10 to 20. One of the points is an outlier. Look, and that one jumps out. It's part A now. That one there, that one's jumping out as being in completely the wrong place. Look. So, I know, I mean, it could be a mistake, it would just be a freak day, freak temperature. Write down the coordinates of the point. If you look here, the coordinates here. Put this one first, halfway between the 9 and the 11, so it's 10 across, and halfway between the 18 and 19, 18 and 20, which is 19 up. So it's 10 across, 19 up. For all of the points, write down the type of correlation, if it's a positive correlation. That means the more hours of sunshine that you've got, the higher the maximum temperature. Okay, which makes sense, because it'll heat up as the day goes on. Okay, on the same day in another British town, the maximum temperature was 16.4. Estimate the number of hours of sunshine on this day. So we look at 16.4. So we go to this axis here, 16, because that's 17 in between the two, each of these little ones is 0.2. See, 16.2, 0.4, 0.6, 0.8, 17, 0.2, 0.4, 0.6, 0.8, 18. So it's 16.2, which is there. Uh, now we need to draw a line of best fit, first of all. A line of best fit is a line that represents this data. So I've drawn what I think is a straight line through it. Um, so, well, yeah, I think that's okay because we've got like two and one little one below it. And then um, could maybe do a better line of best fit. I'll try again. Let's try this one. Oh no. Oh no. That'll do. I don't think there's much in it. So, what did it say? 16.4. So, we've got a read off on the 16.4. This is important. So, we start here. Nope, missed. 16.4. Nope, missed there again. I'll try again. 16.4. That starts slightly above because it seems to drop it when I do it. Right, try again. Ah, I like that one. 16.4 down there. That's better. So that was the 12. So it's 12.2.4.6.8. So I'm going to say 12.8 hours of sunshine on that day. Tem the weatherman says temperatures are higher on days when there's more sunshine. Does the scatter graph support what the man says? Yes, it does. Because more sunshine, higher temperature. Yes. It does support it. Yes. As the positive correlation 
shows that more sunshine gives high temperatures. Okay, 22. Express 56 as a product of its prime factors. 56. Find a way of making 56. It's 2 times 28. 2 is prime. Break down the 28. It's 2 times 14. 2 prime. Break down the 14. 2 times 7. And they're both prime numbers. So you can say it's 2 cubed times 7. Or it could be 2 times 2 times 2 times 7. 2 times 2 times 2 times 7. Right, number 23, work out 54.6 times 4.3. Okay, 54.6 times 4.3. Um, 54.6 times 4.3. Okay, so 4 times 50 is 200. Four fives are 20 with the extra naught. Four fours are 16. And four times 0.6 is 2.4. Okay, 0.3 times 50. Well, the way to do that is imagine covering up this point here. Three fifties are 100, three fifties are 150, but with the naught point, make it 10 times smaller. So that's going to be 15. Same for this next one. 3, 4 is a 12, but then it's got to be 10 times smaller because the decimal point is 1.2. And 0.3 times 0.6, well, what you can do there, you can do 6 times 3 is 18. So we ignore the decimal points at first, but then we say, well, look, there's two decimal point places in the question. Do we need to put 2 in the answer? So you can say 0 0.6 times 0 0.3, 0 0.18. Two decimal points in the Two decimal points in the question leads to two, two decimal places in the question leads to two decimal places in the answer. Okay. So in total, we've got 200 and 16 and 2.4 on the top. So it's 8, 1, 218.4 on the top. And then on the bottom line, we've got 15, 1.2, not 0.18. So that's not, not. Where there isn't, there we are, add them up. There's an 8 there, 2 plus 1 is 3. And 15 plus 1 is 16. So eventually we need to do 218.4. Plus 16.38, put a zero there for the place value. That's an eight, that's a seven. Eight and six is 14. One, two, three, and two. 234.78. Okay, let's just go check up the highlight on my answers properly. But the area of the square A, B, C, D is 10 centimetres squared. Show that X squared plus 6X is 1. Right, so there's a few ways of doing this. I was about to launch in one way, but I've just seen another way. So this area of the square, this one in here, this bit, this square here is 3 times 3, which is 9. Okay, this bit here, that's 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 the three there, that's the three there. Okay, so that's that one. Right, this next one, that's an x that way and a three that way. So it's a three times x, which is three x. And then this one, that's an x times a three, when you because that's three there. Look, that's a three. That's an x, and that's an x. So that's another 3x. And then this one is x times x. So 
that's x squared. Okay, so the, all those totals together, which is the nine, oh, wrong thing, the nine, the three x, the three x, and the x squared, they all make 10. So we've got nine plus three x plus three x plus x squared equals 10. So looking, bear, bearing in mind that we need it to look like this, rearrange this, we get x squared plus six x, those two combined together, plus nine is 10. Then subtract nine from each side, x squared plus six x equals one as required. Right, 25. Rectangular frame is made from five straight pieces of metal. Okay, the weight of the metal is one and a half kilos per meter. Work out the total weight of the metal in the frame. Okay, so we see that one's a five meters. That one's a 12 meters. This is the one that we need to figure out, first of all. Now this one, this is in blue. I've drawn a right angle triangle. And for a right angle triangle, we can use Pythagoras' theorem to work out the diagonal. That's A, that's B, and that's C. You get A squared plus B squared. A C squared. Okay. So if we call that one, um, I call it H for hypotenuse, but I'll call it, well, I'll call it C to match what we've got down there. So in our above, and using Pythagoras, we've got 12 squared plus 5 squared is C squared. So 144 plus 25 c squared 144 plus 25 is 169 is c squared so c is the square root of 169 which we know to be 13 so that one's 13 meters so the total length of metal is five two fives two twelves and a 13, so that's 10 and 24, which is 34, plus 13, 37, 47 meters. Now each meter weighs one and a half kilos, so 47 times 1.5, so that's gonna be a 47 plus a half of 47, which is 23.5, and these are gonna be in kilos. This is the weight, 47, 23.5, 5, 10, 70.5 kg. Okay, so that's that one. Let's get your answer there. 26, the equation of the line L1 is y is 3x minus 2. The equation of this line, second line, 3 where minus 9x plus 5 is not. Show the lines are parallel. Right, parallel lines have the same gradient, have the same gradient. Okay, and if it's in y equals mx plus c, the gradient is m. first one, the M is 3. Okay, so the second one, L2, we've got 3Y minus 9X plus 5 is 0. So we need to rearrange this because it's got to be just Y and the X's and the constants have to be on the other side, on the right hand side of the equation and it's got to be 1Y. So let's start by saying 3Y, add 9X to each side and then subtract 5 from each side. Then divide both sides by 3. So we get y is 3x minus 5 over 3. Look, m is 3. So the gradient of each line is 3. So therefore, the lines are parallel. Okay. 
the last question. 27. We've got A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. Diagonal's intercept to O. Yep, we can see that there. O to A is an A and O to B is a B. Find in terms of B the vector D to B. Right, if we've got, look, there's a B there. And because it's in the middle here, this is also going to be a B. Okay, so D to B is 2B. Okay, underline the B. They write it in bold, but we underline it. Right, I'll just uh, rub out that line there because that's going to get messy. Now it says, find in terms of A and B the vector A to B. So to start from, oh, I'll do this with this. You've got to start from A and get to B, and we're allowed to use A's and B's. So we've got to go, we can go backwards along this line, and that's a minus A plus a B. Okay, so it's minus A plus a B, or you can say it's B minus A. To get from A to B, you can also do a B, which will take you up there, and then minus an A, which will bring you back there. It's just going minus a plus b. Okay, so either of those will work. Let's write minus a plus b because that one looks a bit more intuitive from the diagram. And now, find in terms of a and b, how we get from part c, this is from a to d. So it's a min, we need to go back there, which is a minus a, and then we've got to go back that way, which is a, it's the minus b. It's that one, it's that, is that there, and that's B's that way, so this is minus B. Okay, so this is minus A, minus B. And that's that answer there. Okay, and then that's all those marks done. So I'll stop.